Um, so thanks for that reading, uh, Brother Tim. Um, so uh, I'm just going to take uh, from Proverbs chapter 9, verse 6. The uh, sermon title today is Go in the Way of Understanding. Um, so Proverbs 9, 6 says, Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. So today we're going to be a lot in the, in the book of Proverbs. So if you want to keep your place there, we'll, we'll uh, be in Proverbs chapter 8 soon. Um, but it's going to be teaching about most of the book of Proverbs. It's not something that's automatic with us, like wanting to seek after wisdom. It's not something that we just automatically have when we get saved. We don't just receive all wisdom and knowledge and understanding. It's something we actually have to ask for and seek. Um, so th- and that's what this sermon is going to be about. Um, Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So and if you are simple and you're not wise, that is okay, but as long as you're not you know, happy to remain simple and ignorant to the things of God, because you know, he wants us to, to know the things of God, he wants us to understand, to have his wisdom and to seek after it. So you might, be, uh, you might not be wise today, you might not be seeking that today, but this is something that you can just ask the Lord for. And it says he will give to them. Uh, in James 1, I, I've, I've gone through this many times in a lot of my sermons, um, but it says, if any lack wisdom... Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So again, the promise is there. If we ask for his wisdom, if we seek after it, he says that he will give it to us. And he'll upbraideth not. So he won't take it away from you either. Like once he's promised, um, he says you'll, you'll have wisdom. You'll have knowledge and understanding. He'll give it to you freely. But it says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So again, you have to ask in faith. You have to seek God in faith and ask him for his wisdom and his knowledge and his understanding because he wants to give it to us. He, wa- he doesn't want us to be ignorant of the things of God. He wants us to be wise and to know him. You know, So we should seek after the kingdom of God. We should seek after his things. We should seek after his wisdom. Um, you know, so he doesn't want us to be ignorant. Because, and as Brother Callum preached this morning, you know, because it's also about the statutes and commands of God. We need to know the statutes and commands of God. That's the wisdom of God. And that's what we need to know and understand if we want to know God. And if we don't want to be called least in the kingdom of heaven, then we need to seek his wisdom. We need to seek his knowledge. You know, and that does include the statutes and laws and commandments of God. Also rightly dividing between what's been done away with and fulfilled and what's still to come. You know, what we still need to fulfill in our own lives. So if you're, in, if you're in Proverbs 8, if not, turn there now. But we'll pick up in verse 1 of Proverbs 8. And there's so much in Proverbs you'll get about wisdom. There's an entire chapter that's just dedicated to it. And we'll cover a couple of those today. But in Proverbs 8, 1, it says, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. So again, he's urging us to seek after and to understand wisdom. You know, and that's why he went to all that trouble to preserve the word of God for us. So we could have his wisdom, we could seek after it, we could meditate on it. Because otherwise, what would we have? If we didn't have his wisdom, then he'd have no right to come and say, you need to seek my wisdom. But he's given it to us, but it's up to us to read it. It's up to us to meditate on it. So, you know, and being ignorant is a shame. You know, it brings a shame unto you. You know, that's why he says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you bring shame to yourself when you don't know the word, when you don't have the wisdom of God. And people will know you're a fool because they'll hear your wisdom and it's not the wisdom of God. So, But another important thing too is you won't be able to know how to judge because judging is an important part. As we'll see here, we'll pick up in verse 6 of Proverbs 8. But judging is a good part, not just for yourself, but in just to be able to judge others as well in righteousness. So in Proverbs 8, 6, it says here, For I will speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. So froward is like angry or 
Um, you know, and of course, perverse means you're not speaking perverse things, you're not speaking about things that are violent, disgusting, things the world would speak about and hold in high regard. You know, but it says, all, all the words of my mouth are righteousness. So you're going to speak righteous things when you have the wisdom of God. You're going to speak the wisdom of God. You're not going to speak the wisdom of the world. In verse 9 it says, They are all plain to him that understandeth, and write to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. So again, we see there that wisdom calls out to us. They want to teach, God wants to teach us sound wisdom and instruction. Um, I'll get you to turn to Exodus 35. Um, what we see here, and that's why I had First Chronicles 22 read, is you're seeing about the building of the temple. And we saw there also at the end of, um, in, in Proverbs 8, uh, 12, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. So when he was building the tabernacle, you know, that required skill and wisdom. And the Lord poured out his spirit on the men who were to perform those tasks, you know, to the workers. And I'll read to you from Proverbs 24, 3. It says, through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counsellors there is safety. Now, of course, there's a spiritual application as well. Our house is built upon a rock. We're built upon the solid ground of the word of God and Jesus Christ. Um, so that's where, you know, by wisdom is a house builded. And it's Christ who builds the house because he's the one who's conforming us to, his, to the image of his son. But you've also got a in physical building as well, as we saw with the tabernacle. And we'll see in Exodus 35, we'll pick up in verse 30. It says, And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord hath called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, the tribe of Judah. And he hath filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, and to devise curious works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass, and in the cutting of stones to set them, and in carving of wood to make any manner of cunning work. And he hath put in his heart that he may teach both he and Holiab, the son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan. Them hath filled with wisdom of the heart to work all manner of work, of the engraver, of the cunning workman, of the embroiderer in blue and in purple and scarlet and fine linen, and of the weaver even of them that do any work, and of those that devise cunning work. So again, wisdom, both in an earthly sense as well, it'll find out knowledge and witty inventions, and they're going to help you in your everyday life. You know, so whether it be at your job, whether you're serving at the church, whether you're raising, raising children, running your family, you know, and I have had problems where I've come across where you know, I, have, I didn't know how to fix the problem. I don't, know what I'm, you know, I don't always know what I'm doing, but the Lord knows more than I. So I can go and seek after the Lord's wisdom and pray to him and say, Lord, I need help. Work, work through my hands. Give me the skills I need to do a job that's worthy. Because when I'm working, I'm working under the Lord. So if I want to do a good job and I want to, I want to be a, a glory unto the Lord and, a, and have a good reputation before the Lord and before men, then I want to do a good job. And I need the Lord to put the skill in my hands to do that. You know, so, and he will do that for you as well. If you just seek after his wisdom and just seek for him to give you the skills, so that you can have a good testimony amongst, amongst the people you're working with, amongst the world and amongst your brethren. You know, and if you do seek the Lord, he will give you that wisdom. As we saw in James, he'll give you the wisdom that you need. You just need to seek after him first. So I'll get you to turn to Acts chapter 23. So in Acts 23, verse 1, so we see a story here with Paul, the Apostle Paul. And we're just going to go through this a little bit. In Acts 23, 1, it says, And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God unto this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that they stood by him to smite him in the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall. For sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? 
And they that stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? And then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, he was the high priest, for it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of the people. So Paul gets into trouble here, where he, he misspeaks to the, to the high priest. You know, and there's a lot of, um, a lot of Jews in the synagogue surrounding him. Um, but just take note of what happens next in verse 6. It says, But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. Of the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. And when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. For the Sadducees say there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees' part arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. And when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him by force from among them and to bring him into the castle. And the night, followed the Lord stu- night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. So Paul had the wisdom of God and the discernment of the situation to create an opportunity to escape from those who wanted to seek him harm. You know, and we have that same promise as well. And Paul does indeed end up testifying in Rome, where he actually stands before the king. And in Acts twenty six twenty one, this is what he says about his encounter. He said, For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continued unto this day, witnessing both the small and great, saying, None of none other things than those which the prophets of Moses did say should come. So we saw here, it says, um, having a, therefore obtained help of God. So in that situation, when he escaped, he said it was God who, who helped me escape. And what was it? It was the wisdom of God, because God will help his children. You know, so it allows us to escape the snares and the tricks of the devil and that our enemies will have for us. And that's why we're not to be ignorant of the devil's devices. You know, so just as Paul escaped from the wicked men who sought to do him harm, in Proverbs 22.3, it says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. So Paul was a wise man and a prudent man, and he foresaw the evil that was going to befall him. So then, you know, of course, he, the situation was created where the Roman soldiers came in and took him out, and then he was under, under centurion watch for a number of years, you know, while he appeared before the king and everything else in Rome, where he actually got to stand before the king and prophesy you know, almost converting, you know, one, one, one or more to Christianity. Um, so back in Proverbs 8, if you're still there, in verse 13, it says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. So again, the fear of the Lord and the wisdom of God is to hate evil, is to hate pride, to hate arrogancy and the evil way. You know, and that means that those who are wise and seek after wisdom will also hate that evil. Um, we'll be meek and humble. We will not be proud and arrogant. And that'll come through again. We saw before, that comes through in the words you speak. The way you speak will show whether you're a fool or whether you're wise. You know, so the wisdom of God will come through. And, and that's exactly how we'll know. Um, we'll recognize the evil. We'll speak against it. We'll recognize the proud and the arrogant. And we'll rebuke them. And we'll also love the statutes and laws of God because they are important to us, and that is the wisdom of God. His commandments is his wisdom. In verse 14, it says, Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. So again, wisdom gives us the ability to judge, gives us the ability to counsel, 
not just your, your home and, and others, but also yourself. Um, but counselling your wife and your children and, and even others who you may have rule over, that's important. Like kings like David, they relied on that to rule after. Um, you know, they, they rely on God's wisdom to be able to judge righteously. And when it comes to pastors and deacons, they also, you know, should be wise men, you know, well before they're ever, ever ordained to be a pastor. They should be proven to be wise men. They should be proven to, to love the commands and statutes of the Lord. And in, in Acts chapter 6, that was actually one of the requirements for the deacons. Um, you'll see that what they, are, what they required of them, but these were men who were full of the Holy Ghost and of wisdom. So if you're not full of the Holy Ghost and of wisdom, then you should not be a deacon, you should not be in leadership, you should not be a pastor. You know, you're just not qualified because it all starts, you know, it all starts with the fear and the love and the wisdom of God. So um, I'll have you turn to 1 Kings chapter 3. We'll start in verse 5. But that's the thing, judgment and discernment is an important part of leading the church. You know, if, if our pastor Kevin didn't, have good judgment and didn't have the wisdom of God and didn't have good discernment, this place would fall apart. You know, you never know who's going to walk in your door when the wolf comes in. You need someone who's a good judge and a good, char- you know, a good character and who knows how to discern between good and evil. So in 1 Kings 3 verse 5, it says, In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. Now most people will know this passage. And, and said, Ask, what shall I give thee? And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth, and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept him from this great kindness, and thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to come out, to go out or come in. Again, we see the very humble man is Solomon. You know, a lot of humility here. That's part of having the wisdom of God, which obviously came from his father, is that he also is a very humble man like his father. And this is why the Lord approaches him and basically says, what do you want? I'll give you anything you want. Because he's made a sacrifice and a petition unto God, and God just says, I'm so pleased with you, what do you want? You know, and this is what he's asking for. This is his response. It says, and thy servants in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this so, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Again, we can ask the same thing. He says, if you come to me and you ask for wisdom, I'll give it to you because I want you to have it. He's not trying to hide it from us. He wants us to have it. And we saw that Solomon asked for wisdom. And the purpose that he asked for it, as he said, that I may discern between good and bad, and he asked for an understanding heart. And that's so that he can counsel and judge the people in righteousness. You know, and we also need wisdom if we want to judge righteously as well. So in Matthew chapter 7, you'll hear a lot that people say, judge not. You know, they, they just want to read those two words, and that's the end of the chapter for them, you know. But it says, judge not lest you be not judged. But they're, they're trying to teach that we should not judge anyone. But that's actually the complete opposite of what that's teaching. It's teaching you need to get yourself right and have your own wisdom and be, have a clean conscience before God before you can help your brother out, you know, to get him right as well. But when it comes to judgment, the scripture in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 3 says, Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more the things that pertain to this life? And in uh, Proverbs 21.3, it also says, to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. And the same chapter, verse 7, the robbery of the wicked shall destroy them because they refuse to do judgment. So the wicked refuse to do judgment. And that's the same people who are teaching from Matthew 7 that we're not to judge. They're also wicked people, you know, because God loves judgment. He commands us to judge. And in order to judge, we need wisdom. We need understanding. We need that understanding heart and the wisdom of God. Otherwise, your judgment's going to be carnal. It's going to be of the flesh. It's going to be of the world. And it's not going to be right judgment. And the wicked also, they refuse to judge themselves. They, don't want to, they, want you, 
they don't want to come into the law. Like, they don't want you telling them you shouldn't do this sin, you shouldn't do that sin. They don't want to even judge themselves. They don't want to be judged at all. But the Bible says we should judge ourselves. You know, if, if we want to go to the Lord for fellowship, if we want to pray to Him, then we need to make sure we have a clean heart before Him. We need to confess our sins to Him. Make sure we have a good, clear conscience before the Lord. It's in uh, Proverbs 21.15. It said, It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. And I'll read from Proverbs 24, uh, verse 23 to 25. It says, These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect to persons in judgment. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him. But to them that rebuke him, shall be, him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. So we're not, again, when it comes to judgment, we shouldn't have respect to persons. We see that again in James chapter, chapter 2, about having respect to persons in judgment. You know, that's something God considers to be wicked. And that's not according to the wisdom of God. But we should also not praise the wicked, uh, but we should rebuke them. Because the, Lord, the, the, the world's going to praise the wicked. They certainly do today. Um, but it's up to us to rebuke the wicked and the wickedness that goes on. So to finish that point, in 1 Peter 4, verse 17, it says, For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So again, judgment begins with us. It begins in the church. It begins in the house of God. And that's why you see in 1 Corinthians 5 where they have to judge a man. Paul said he's judged already. But he says, For what have I to do to them that also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? There's an expectation that the church is going to judge, the, judge these things. He says, But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore put them away from among yourselves that wicked person. So he says, Go cast out that man that was committing fornication with his, with his father's wife and said he needs to be thrown out so that the devil will destroy his flesh because God does not want him in his house. Now that guy did end up getting right with God and ended up coming back into the church. You read that in 2 Corinthians. But that was the thing. It was if, if this guy is not going to repent and get right with God, then there's no place. He's got to be judged and thrown out of the church. So, But that's why we also need to understand and know the laws of God what he's commanded us, what will get you thrown out of church. You know, because if you don't know those things, if you're unwise or ignorant of those things, then how can you judge at all? And that's why he gave us a book full of wisdom. Now, that's not just the book of Proverbs, which is probably the most wisdom you know, there is in, in one book. But the whole scripture is just full of the wisdom of God and the words of God. And he wants to, us to seek the understanding of the whole book. You know, not just one or two books that you may like, but the whole, the whole scripture is for doctrine, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You know, so we're just going to look at a few more scriptures. They'll compare the wise to the foolish. So sometimes it's best to also identify not just what we should do, but also what we shouldn't do. Um, so we'll turn to Proverbs chapter 18. We'll be reading a little bit there. But in Proverbs 18, 2, it says, A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. So the foolish man, he wants to do what's right in his own eyes. He wants to discover in himself what he, you know, what's good and what's not good. But that doesn't please the Lord at all. You know, a wise man is who delights in what the Lord wants. We delight in, in the laws of the Lord, and we'll get to that in Psalms 1. You know, we, we should all know this pretty well as well. The blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So again, as God's children, we should be delighting in the laws of the Lord. You know, and in his wisdom, it says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Now, Brother Callum quoted that this morning as well. That's from Psalm 119. But it's a terrible thing to be offended by the word of God because it shows you don't, do not love his law, 
You don't love the Lord if you don't love his law. He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So if you don't keep his commandments, if you don't even know his commandments or even bother to learn what his commandments are, then how can you say you love the Lord? So the end of, uh, the end of Psalm 1 also contrasts with the ungodly. It says, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So their way is the ways of death. You know, and that's a common theme you'll see with the fool who does what's right in his own eyes. The end of that man is death, but the end of us is life. So you're, you're there in Proverbs 18. We'll read verse 4. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. So again, we've just seen that again with not having respect to persons in judgment, which actually you can overthrow the righteous then. If you're respecting you know, a wicked man who just happens to be wealthy, you just happen to like this man, and you're going to judge against your brother because you like this man more. It's like, how wicked is that? And the words that come out of your lips are going to, again, show, you know, the words of a man's mouth are as deep waters and the wellspring of wisdom as a flying brook. So when you're speaking wise words, people are going to know that's a wise man, that's a man who loves God, it's a man who, who knows the wisdom of God and who seeks after it. In verse 6 it says, A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a talebearer are his wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. So again, a fool is not wise with his words. He'll speak wicked things, but they can also be talebearers. And they're just causing problems wherever they go. And in verse 3 of that same chapter, which we didn't read, but it says the wicked comes, it says when the wicked comes, they bring contempt. And people will have contempt for you if you're a talebearer, but also if you're a fool, because they're just going to think you're an idiot, and you are. If you're seeking after your own wisdom, if you're just saying what's in your own heart and not the, thing, the wise words of God, then you are going to be an idiot. You are going to come across as a fool. And people are going to have contempt for you. you know, whereas if you speak with the wisdom of God, people are going to love you and embrace you and you're going to have kindness in your lips. And that's going to make all the difference in the world. So in, in Proverbs 24, if you want to turn there, In Proverbs 24, verse 1, it says, Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. For their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. So we see that same theme again. It just runs all through the book of Proverbs. You know, about the foolish man just brings destruction to himself. Um, turn to Proverbs chapter 10. We'll read... Uh, Read a little bit here as well. Proverbs 10, verse 11. It says, The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sins. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. So again, the lips of him hath understanding, wisdom is found. So it's better to, to learn, you know, through reading the wisdom of God and through looking at other people, learning from their mistakes, than to be the foolish man who requires it to be beaten into him. Because that's a horrible way to have to learn. If you're so stubborn and you're so proud that you just don't get the wisdom of God and you don't seek after the wisdom of God, then God may have to bring correction and it'll be pretty severe to bring you in line with his wisdom and what he wants. But we see that theme again, wise men are known by their speech, by their understanding of Scripture, and you'll also see it plays out in the love of others. And how you deal with and treat others will say a lot about what's in your heart. You know, it'll tell you if you love God. You know, it'll also tell them that you, you're someone who seeks after wisdom. You, you have understanding, you have the fear of God is an important part of that. So we should always deal well with our brethren. We shouldn't be backbiters, we shouldn't be tail bearers, you know. 
we should treat our brother well. It says love covereth all sin. So we should cover our brother's sins, you know, and just pray for them. Don't share, like, don't share the sins of your brother. If he confesses them to you and he, he just wants you to pray with him and to help him, then don't go sharing that with, with somebody else. You know, because we should cover the, cover the sins of our brethren and help them, help them to grow. And when, when they fall, pick them up. You know, we don't, want to, we, we don't want to push them down again by just backbiting against them, railing against them, you know, and just making them feel horrible. We, we want to lift them up and edify them. You know, so again, we should cover our brother's sins and help them, pray for them. You know, use the wisdom of God, the discernment and judgment that God's given to you. Uh, verse 16, Proverbs 10 says, the labor of the righteous tendeth to life, the fruit of the wicked to sin. Verse 18, he that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. Sometimes just keeping your mouth shut is the best option. You know. Um, the tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. There's no worth to them at all. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. And verse 23, it is our sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. So again, we see the words and the works just show what's in your heart. They show whether you're a wise man or whether you're seeking the foolish things of this world or the foolishness of your own heart. You know, and that's why we can't be simple when it comes to the things of God. He doesn't want us to be simple. You know, he wants us to know and understand so that we can do good works, so that we can, when we know, this is the time where I should pray for my brother, but I shouldn't be backbiting or saying, spreading rumors and things like that about them. Keep your mouth shut, you know, because that's the better option at that point, is just to, just to love your brethren, to want, want what's good for them and to edify them. So I'll get you to turn to Proverbs chapter 2. But our whole purpose here is to serve and minister to our brethren. So, you know, and if we can't do that, then do we have the wisdom and understanding of God? Because he's been good to us, you know. So Proverbs 2, 1 says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Again, you see how many times the commandments, the laws, the statutes of God come up when it comes to do with the wisdom of God. You know, that's what he wants us to meditate on, on his commandments. Hide your commandments with you. You know, meditate on his word. If you love him, you keep his commandments. You know, this is what God expects from us. It says, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. So again, what a promise. If we want to know the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, this is how you do it. You know, you cry after knowledge, but you hide the commandments of God in your heart. And he says if you seek after it, that you'll find the knowledge and fear of God. You know, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So to be wise, first you have to be humble. You have to come at him like a little child. But then you also need to fear the Lord. You know, so seek out his wisdom. He will re reveal his knowledge. He's not hiding it from us. So in verse six, Proverbs, sorry, Proverbs two, verse six, for the Lord giveth wisdom out of the, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He's a buckler to them that walk uprightly. And we know Proverbs thirty, verse five, every word of God is pure. He's a shield unto them. That's like a buckler. That put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. So again, you know, he is a buckler to us. His wisdom and understanding is what protects us. You know, by having that knowledge, being able to judge righteously. And that's just him instructing us, read the word of God. It says, out of, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So who spoke these words? You know, the word, Jesus Christ is the word of God. So if he is if out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding, then that's where we need to go to find it. So we'll see um, Proverbs 2.9. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. Again, not having respect to persons in judgment. Um, Proverbs 2.12. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh 
thrower things. That's what we saw with the Apostle Paul, where he was able to, to escape from the way of the evil man because he had the wisdom of God. So the wisdom of God keeps us from those who would do us evil. It gives us the discernment and discretion um, that we should, you know, so we can be preserved from these wicked men. They, they do seek to do us harm. This world hates us. They want to do us harm. But the way we're going to be protected from that is by seeking after the wisdom and understanding of God. So it continues on there where it goes on about the strange woman, you know, whose feet go down to death. You know, so there's plenty of people who are going to be able to harm you, and this is another one who tries to ensnare you. But you can trust that with verse 20, it says that thou, speaking to the believers, that thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. So again, if you want to discern against this, this strange woman that's trying to lead you down a path of lust and fornication, or even adultery if you're married, you know, you need to have the wisdom of God, the discernment, and he'll, he'll protect you from these things. Just having that knowledge and understanding will protect you from these things. So I'll just go over the three points that I brought up in this sermon. So the first point is that we should ask God for wisdom, and we need to ask unwavering. It says if you waver, he says you'll not receive anything. Point two is to seek to use God's, God's wisdom in all areas of your life. So it will improve your work, it will improve the way you speak, it will improve your knowledge of the mysteries of God, which is left for us in his word, that he says he'll teach us all things if we seek after them. And the third point is to use God's wisdom in counsel and judgment. So first, inwardly for yourself, but also those who you may be in authority over, whether it be a work, whether you're a father, whether you're a pastor, that you need to have you know, that judgment. You need to have the wisdom to be able to judge righteously. And mothers as well, when you're raising your children, that's an important aspect as well, that you need to have that wisdom so that you can also teach your children the wise counsels of God according to his and not your own wisdom. So again, that verse I started with, Proverbs 9, 6. It says, Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. So we need to forsake the foolish things in our life and the wisdom of this world to go in the way of understanding of the Lord. You know, so there are, there are a few things where the world is very contrary to what the Scripture teaches. Like when it comes to child rearing, they'll teach you that if you discipline your children with the rod, that you actually hate your child. You know, they'll, they'll tell you that you don't love your child if you spank them, if you, you know, discipline them, you just need to let them do and be their own thing. But the Bible teaches that, look, if you spare the rod, you hate your son. If you don't discipline your children, if you, if you don't raise them in the nurture and happiness of the Lord, you hate your child. You know, that's contrary to the world. When it comes to money, they want you to accumulate all your wealth. They want you to, to work, you know, to be rich on this, on this earth. But see, we, we look for a, a, city, a city and a country made with our hands. You know, we're looking to the heavenly Zion that's one day going to come down on this earth. So our rewards are not here, they're up there. And that's what we're looking for. You know, whereas the world teaches you, it's all here. That's, this is all you've got. Well, I've got nothing here. I'm, you know, naked came I into the world. <laughs> naked, I'll leave. You know, there's nothing here that I, I can take with me. And also when it comes to your work ethic, you know, where the Bible teaches six days shall thou labor. It teaches if a man doesn't work, neither should he eat. It says if a man doesn't take care of his family, let him be anathema. You know, you've got to provide for your family. But the world says, well, let the government take care of it. Let someone else take care of it. If a man doesn't want to work, then you take out of your money and you give to him. Well, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches we give to the poor and the needy. We don't give to the lazy. Whereas this world will do that. So these are things that are just contrary. And these are, these are things we need to avoid. We need to have the wisdom and knowledge of God and do things his way. But I will encourage you. Sorry, I'll just read to you Proverbs 1.22. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. So I, I suggest reading through Judges. Read through the books of the Kings and Chronicles as well. You know, and see what happens when people do what's right in their own eyes. You know, by their own foolish wisdom and the wickedness in their heart. So when, what happens to the people? When you've got an unrighteous king, what happens to the people? They go whoring after other gods. They get into idolatry. 
You know, they, they break the commandments as Israel did so many times because they had wicked leaders who didn't seek the wisdom of God. And they'll commit fornication, they'll commit adultery, and they commit idolatry. They worship Baal, and they had sodomites all through the land. You know, but contrast that to what happens when God's rulers actually hearken to the wisdom of God. You know, when they do what's right in the eyes of the Lord, that's when they put the sodomites out of their land. They destroy their houses, they killed them all. You know, and they worship the Lord and they rejoiced in him. There's peace and safety in the land, which you can only have when you seek the wisdom of God. And all their enemies were defeated. They had victories because they were doing what the Lord commanded them. And Proverbs 16.2 says, All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. So what I want you to do today is just think about that and consider where your wisdom comes from. You know, decide if you want the wisdom of God to follow his righteousness, to follow his commandments and statutes, or do you want to do what's right in your own eyes, where the end is, the end is destruction and you'll be found a fool. So I'll get you to turn to 2 Peter 3.14. This is where we'll finish up today. I'll just read to you from Proverbs 16.20. It says, He that handleth the matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. So this is the final instruction from Peter. In 2 Peter chapter 3 at the end there, verse 14, it says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things, before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So we see here again, you know, Paul had wisdom, but he's speaking that, you know, we know these things, if we, if, we want to con if we continue in them, then we will be found, you know, without spot and blameless. And the church is supposed to be found spotless and blameless when the Lord returns. So, yeah, seek after his wisdom and not your own. So we'll pray.